Okay. I'm going to bring in one of your old uh, guys from uh, the <laughs> right. New York delegation, right. Joe Crowley, a uh, former congressman from New York. Joe and he, yes, that's right. Are that's Rick Lazio yelling at you in the background. Is he so, his strat with um, <laughs> so uh, by the way, look how rusty he looks. He does look in rusty. I'm talking about yeah. Crowley all the time. Now. Yeah, I'm telling you, he's he's uh, he's charming like oh, he always was, but now he's relaxed. He's okay. He's living the good life. How's Joe, Joe, plan? tell me, this is not. I'm not reading this the right way. Is this, uh, are you nervous here more than you were a couple hours ago? Yeah, I am. Uh, I'm nervous that uh, at least half the population uh, can continue to vote for this guy. So that makes me nervous for a lot of reasons. Um, I, I just caught the tail end of your conversation and uh, it's for those very same reasons that I have concerned. Yeah, even if Biden wins, and I think Biden will win, I still feel he, he's going to win. But, um, it, it, we, are, we are living in a very divided country. Uh, things that were clear uh, delineation markers no longer uh, exist, quite frankly. And it's hard to understand it. And the double standard that you talk about uh, before, uh, it seems to me as though everything is out the window and um, free for all in many respects. Uh, and I, I think if Donald Trump is reelected, it'll be disappointing to the rest of the world, quite frankly. Uh, our our allies, our traditional allies, post World War II, um, you know, they, they putting people off center, off kilter, uh, cozying up to dictators, all those things we've talked about, and um, hard to believe um, that he could be reelected. Quite frankly, this to me, okay, because as a person, when 9/11 happened, he literally went on the local Channel Five in New York and talked that he had the tallest building in Lower Manhattan. He lied about going down to ground zero to help out and sending a crew down, okay? I, I can go on about that. My point is, you got a lot of firefighters in, in your family, okay? And I'm curious, at the firehouses, where they lost guys doing the most heroic thing imaginable, are some of those guys 20 years later pulling the lever for Trump when they know that he's just such a bad guy? I think, unfortunately, many uh, have and uh, and did and and did in this election as well. I, That's the part I, I don't get. Why? Well, they know well, better. I, I think that there is a, a a great divide that has taken place, and either you're for law enforcement or you're not. It's it's black and white. There's no in between. Like in the sense that, you know, I don't. I'm not just talking about pro uh, whether you're pro cop or pro criminal. No one's pro criminal, right? But the notion or idea that if you're for some type of reforms for civil rights, for racial justice, then you must be anti-cop. And that couldn't be further from the truth. But if you're in those jobs, I think sometimes, especially in firefighters, they sleep amongst themselves. You know, they're, they're constantly uh, talking about this over the, over the dinner table, um, on the way to a fire, on the way back, you know, et cetera. So I do think that there is those elements that are involved in that as well. But... Um, you know, not every firefighter thinks that way, quite frankly, nor does every police officer think that way. Uh, but I think, unfortunately, overwhelmingly, they do in, in, in many respects, and it's unfortunate. Um, was the messaging... See, I don't think if, um, if Biden loses tonight, I think the criticism that he should have run a different campaign the last month, I think it's, it's, it's not only Monday morning quarterbacking, but it's wrong. He choose, chose to be responsible in a pandemic and not pack in the crowds. But from a messaging standpoint, was there a point in the last month where you said, he's hitting the wrong notes here. He should be pushing this instead of that. Yeah, well, I think we can all look to the last debate and the, 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 the faux pas that was made in terms of fracking, for instance, with Pennsylvania being so critical uh, but yet, when you really look at the issues that matter to people, the number one issue in many of these, uh, you know, uh, close states like Pennsylvania, et cetera, exit polling is saying that the coronavirus is the number one issue. The number two issue is the economy. Now, I think if the economy is the issue, that helps Trump. Uh, I would imagine, though, if the coronavirus is the issue, it, you know, we live in the United States of America, uh, one of the, if not the most sophisticated country in the world. Uh, we represent 5% of the population, but 20% of the coronavirus deaths. I'm not talking about people who are being tested or not being tested. I'm talking about the number of deaths in this country. So it really is mind-boggling to me that if your number one issue is the coronavirus, 
how you could vote for Donald Trump. I just don't see how you can do it. We, we, you know, he's failed on a national level uh, to, to really to, to combat the issue uh, uh, and, and to crush this virus. But, um, you know, I think we still have ways to go here. I think it's going to come back down to uh, Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania. I think, you know, that Arizona, I think we're going to win in Arizona tonight as well. Uh, so I do think the Senate is, is collapsing for the Senate, uh, Republicans as well. We see that. Whether they actually get to 50 plus one for Democrats remains to be seen. But I think the House is going to stay uh, in, uh, in Democratic control for sure. So, um, you know, I, I, do, I still think it comes down to those critical states that we've all been talking about for forever, quite frankly. Um, in terms of uh, Joe Biden had a thread and needle to a certain degree in terms of, I think he was the right candidate from the primary choices. Uh, I think only somebody that can be viewed as a mainstream Democrat and not a, uh, you know, a hyper progressive would have had a chance in a general, you know, at least that's my thought. But in threading the needle, we saw at least, um, you know, the turnout didn't seem to be extremely high among African-American voters in certain of the early states uh, that have been called, particularly in Florida, Miami-Dade. Um, how do you navigate that as a Democrat right now? Because I think so many people were just fatigued after four years. They just wanted some return to normalcy, while another constituency, you know, was pushing for major social reforms in this country that would have turned off independence. Uh, and I think people oversimplified the challenge that was in front of Biden. I think it was right. He should have focused on, you know, Trump's character and fo focused on COVID. But it is tough uh, nationally because there seems to be two different kinds of democratic wants. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I think that there's also the emphasis on non-college ed educated voters. That's what the president has emphasized in the more rural parts of the country. Uh, and, uh, you know, the, you know the, this, this is not about being sophisticated or not sophisticated. I think everyone knows exactly what they're doing. Um, but there really was an attempt to do that, and I think successfully in many respects for the, for the president to do that. Uh, but, you know, um, the, the divide you're talking about, and I think Pelosi has this down, she knows that the road to the majority of the House of Representatives was not by replacing people like me with, uh, with people like Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. It's about winning those seats in middle America where Democrats in 2018 were able to win seats that were held by Republicans. And um, that's how, uh, if they're fortunate enough to expand the majority, that's where they're getting the votes as well. And she knows that. I think Democrats understand that, that politics and that mathematics. When it comes to the states, it still comes down to, and I, I will say this to you, look at Texas, look at uh, you know, uh, North Carolina, for instance, even Florida, where Joe Biden, uh, if he doesn't win one of those uh, three states, has it was more competitive than Hillary Clinton uh, was four years ago. Uh, but I, if you look at Arizona, for instance, where I think we will win, uh, that's going to put uh, a red state in, in the blue column. And that was what uh, Joe Biden needed to do. And I think uh, we then go on to see what happens in Wisconsin, Michigan, where I think Biden will win, as he will in Virginia. And then it comes down to Pennsylvania. Well, I think it all comes down to Pennsylvania once again. Uh, yep, and they just announced um, that we're not going to learn Pennsylvania tonight, no matter what. They're going to um, pick this up tomorrow and right. counting those absentee ballots. And already we have the lawsuits between, uh, you know, and I, I mentioned before, the idea that we have to chase to be able to get a regular American citizen in the middle of a pandemic doing the right thing, participating in the democratic process, uh, having their ballot postmarked in time here, sent out, and because the post office, you know, because of all the politics involved here, we don't have the thing delivered, and then people saying we're not going to count it. It just seems to be the antithesis to how a normal democratically run election should work. But anyway, that's me. Um, so finally, um, Pennsylvania, we know the House, we just got word, is going to stay in Democratic hands. No surprise there. Um, Pennsylvania? Yeah, uh, Pennsylvania, we're still going to wait till tomorrow. And that's Chris Shays, another one of your old buddies here, yeah, piping boy. in next to me. So uh, um, anyway, Congressman, I appreciate it. And uh, like I said, you look 
you, 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 you age five years the other way around since you left I the crazy place. I don't look as good as Chris and Rick, but I'm doing my best. Oh, Rick. I mean, <laughs> Rick's, uh, Rick's flipping Pat Riley over here with a slick back do. You should see him. Oh, my God. I don't have the jump shot, though. <laughs> he looks like a movie star. Yes. All right. Joe, thank you for the time. Thanks, I appreciate it. All the best. See you, Take Joe. care. All see right. You, all right, everybody, um, we're getting close to some big states uh, potentially getting called. And by the way, one point I haven't mentioned is the popular vote, which Hillary Clinton won between three to four million votes last time, two full percentage points. Donald Trump is winning the popular vote right now, uh, and he's winning it by more than two percentage points. So if you bet that and went to Vegas, you'd win a ton of money again. You're Joe Crowley, and maybe he's got the blinders on. He wants to want what he wants, but he believes that Arizona, which is trending Democrat at the moment, will go in the blue column, and he thinks at the end of the day, if that firewall in that Rust Belt, the Minnesotas, the Michigans, the Ohios, or certainly at least the Michigans, go for Biden and he can win Pennsylvania, he'll get to the magic number by the skin of his teeth. But there's a lot of ifs in the scenario I just did. So what's changed is where we started the night saying Trump's only got one path to get there and Biden's got a whole bunch, those paths for Biden are beginning to narrow. We're going to take a quick commercial break. When we come back, we'll have more here from the table. And I promise I'll go back to the phone calls and Andrew's getting ready with some returns as well. We'll be right back with more after this.